Welcome, welcome, welcome to our FC Youth Talks podcast. Today is a very, very special episode. Why? Because we got a very special guest. We have Pastor Eric Jimenez all the way from Las Vegas. Um, he's here with us. He, he just preached our breakout. So we're going to sit down with him. We're sitting down with him and we're just going to talk about life, talk about leadership, talk about ministry, talk about coffee, talk about all the things, just all the things. So we're very, very excited. Eric, thank you so much for being here. How are you feeling? <laughs> Man, I am feeling so good. Yeah, we just, we're in Texas, all right? Like Texas, humidity, yeah. Texas, uh, just everything's great in Texas. Yeah. And, yeah. and more than that, being at uh, Perlin First Church, yeah. it's been incredible. We, like yeah. you said, we had a great time last night yeah. at Breakout. Uh, it was just truly, it was just truly such a God moment yeah. uh, that we just felt. And it's just so good to be here, man. Yeah. So, so yes. good to be here on the podcast, yeah. on the First Church Youth Podcast. And yeah. dude, sick. Awesome. Sick, sick. Thank you. So funny, funny thing. So last night at, at um at breakout, so we have this our drummer, his name is CJ. And you guys have like similar body build. You guys were wearing all black. You guys got clear glasses. So after service, super, super funny. He was walking through the lobby and a bunch of people were like coming up to him, like, hey man, killed it in the message. Like you preached awesome, like great message. And he's just sitting there like, uh, it wasn't me. <laughs> so I thought that was that was super, super funny. But yeah, tell us, tell us about real quick, like tell us about yourself. Who is Eric? Where do you come from? Um, tell us a little bit about your background. What what do you love to do? For somebody who's maybe listening and haven't hasn't heard of you, who who is Eric Jimenez? Okay, Eric Jimenez. Well, as of 2020, uh, I'm 24, and uh, you know I was born and raised in Las Vegas, so that's all I know. Las Vegas. Um, it's I know the heat pretty well. Yeah. A dry heat. Um, I've I've been in ministry all of my life. So my parents pastored a church. They they uh, they founded a church 27 years ago, and wow. uh, they pastored 25 years. Um, and then they retired. They uh, they retired um, from being pastors. And my old eldest brother, one of my older brothers, Bobby, he became a senior pastor. Uh, and I was in youth ministry. I interned at our church uh, from middle school all the way to high school. Uh, and as soon as I uh, you know finished high school, um, they said, "Hey, you want to join staff?" Like, and I'm like, "Yeah, like let's do it." I've been I'm, I feel like I'm already on staff. Yeah. Uh, and they're like, "All right." So I became uh, I just started helping out. I uh, became a youth pastor for many years. Um, I stole a lot of sermons from a lot of preachers. <laughs> yeah. And and just, you know, this is this is all I know. Like, just ministry yeah. um, is, is just what, what my life consists of. Yeah. Um, and just when my parents retired and my brother became senior pastor, I became the executive pastor at the church. So that's what I've been doing for the last two years. Yeah. Uh, but aside from ministry, um, Eric, let's see, Eric, I love coffee. Like, I mean, you know, I, I have a coffee cup right now, like my mug that I carry everywhere I go yeah. um, it, my Instagram it literally has hundreds of stories of just like <laughs> different coffee shops that I visit although I go to so it's this crazy story but I go to different coffee shops <clears throat> But I get the same cup of coffee because I just love the taste. I love uh, tasting taste tones yeah, and, yeah. and just figuring out. What is um, that cup of coffee? Oh, okay, so this cup of coffee is a cortado. Yes. It is a cortado. Okay. It's a small little little glass that has two shots of espresso, a little bit of oat milk. You got to like if you drink a cortado, you got to drink it with the oat milk. A little bit of oat milk and a little bit of agave. Yeah. Oh man, that's just like yeah. oh, gosh, yeah. it's it's just yeah. like. It's perfection yeah. in a cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's what I get every morning. So I go to my local coffee shop, which is Vesta's, which um, to be honest with you, I know that I pay their employees. Like I know that I, I know that I'm sustaining, I'm sustaining at least one, yeah, at least of, one their, of their of their employees. <laughs> Yeah, uh, cause they yeah. see they see me every day uh, when I'm home, and if I'm not home, I just like to visit coffee shops. Like just yeah. to visit, it's just yeah. something about coffee shops. Some of my greatest sermons or some of my greatest relationships come from coffee shops. Like yeah. people, you know, we, we we love to say that community. Like it, in life, it's community, yeah. uh, and the community for me is the coffee shop. Like I know yeah. that I get the early morning. Um, and I, I just, I meditate, I talk to God, uh, I talk to people and I just, I love to know people's stories. Like, yeah, I, I always say if I want to make somebody's day better and if that just means just buying them a cup of coffee yeah. or just telling them how good they look, yeah. um, or, or just complimenting me, that's just, that brings joy to me. Yeah. So yeah. coffee is something big in my life. It's yeah. very big. I, I feel like it's not even so much people say like, well, you're an addict and I'm like, well, it's, <laughs> I wouldn't say an addict cause I can go days with 
without coffee yeah. and, and twice a year. That's, that's what every addict yeah, says. Yeah, oh gosh. That's, that's exactly what uh, an addict says. Man, I'm not an addict, but because we go to 21 days well, of, I don't need it. I don't of need fasting it. and prayer, right? Oh, okay. So at the beginning of the year, we go 21 <laughs> days and, and I'm good. Like, I'm fine. Like, no yeah. coffee. Like, let's go. And, and, and that's great. In the middle of the, middle of the year, we, we go into 21 days of fasting and prayer again and I'm, I'm fine. So I know that throughout the year, at least there's 40 days where I won't drink coffee. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the 300 and some other days, yeah, there is coffee every day. It consists of coffee. But yeah. that's just cool. what I love. Coffee and yeah. golf. I feel like other than coffee, uh, my go-to is golf. Yeah, I'm 24, but I've been playing golf my whole life. Like, literally, golf is yeah. it's my pastime. I play... Um, you don't want to see my arms, but I'm so dark. Because like, <laughs> at Vegas, it's like 116, and yeah. it's like 9 in the morning, and I'm just like, yeah. all right, let's play golf. Yeah. So that's just what I do, bro, just golf and coffee. Cool, man. Cool, cool. Okay, so speaking of coffee, I, I would not con- – like I've just started this year – getting into coffee get it like i'm i just started on black coffee this year so okay. it, right here in, in our in our staff um they most of them drink just black coffee yep. like just straight black coffee and I, i'm not used to that like i'm used to um like nescafe with my oh, grandma my with goodness. the leche the, the <laughs> whole thing um so so here it's like for me it was more of a simplicity thing i yeah. i love i love my thing is less is more like uh, i the simpler something is the better like the eat like just Accessible, simple, quick, easy. So, um, so I started I started seeing them drink black coffee, and and I asked Pastor, I'm like Pastor Tyler, like like what, like how do you like? I just hate the taste. Like so he goes, he's like, well, black black coffee is an acquired taste. Mm-hmm. Just just get through it. Just make yourself drink it. Make yourself drink it. So I I did it for like a like two weeks. And now all I like, like, well, I'm drinking a uh, 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 cream right now. Today you're drinking today, sugar yeah. with a little bit of yes, coffee. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> but because it's, it's Starbucks. So, um, so, but I recently got on black coffee. And so I started the, like the Chemex and like uh, my favorite right now, what I'm on is Aeropress. Do you do Aeropress? Yeah, Aeropress. I love Aeropress. Like, but it's like, what, what I love so much about it is like, I have a thing about control. Like I, I want to have my hand in every variable. So with coffee, it's like I mean, you know, the water matters. <laughs> yeah. The type of water matters. The heat matters. The grind matters. The 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 brew time matters. Yeah. So the whole thing. So yeah, what have you done? Like, do you like Aeropress? Oh, What's your favorite like type? My of My go to. My go to. Other than my cortado, like my my go to. And this is so crazy, but I can drink coffee before I go to sleep. Yeah. Cause it, it, oh, I can't. Like, it doesn't wire me up. That's what they, like people say. Like, oh, you're there in the morning to give you energy. Like, no, coffee puts me, caffeine puts me to sleep. <laughs> it, maybe that's like an addict says, right? <laughs> like, but it's just like it brings so much peace yeah. to me. So in the morning, like, although it's two shots of, uh, of espresso, it's like, oh good, like I can go to sleep. And at yeah. night, uh, uh, or even in the mornings, I, I'm a Chemex guy, so I make yeah. Chemex. Like, Chemex is just my go-to. So I know my ratios. I know yeah. my 205. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the heat of the water, my 32 yeah. grams. You know, it's yeah. just like I'm yeah. ready, bro. Like yeah. it's just. People come over to the house and they're like, man, this looks like a lab. Like we're in a science lab <laughs> yeah, right yeah, now. And yeah. I'm like, this is just what I love to do yeah. because I, 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 and I know this is like, I don't want to be the spiritual guy. Right. But like, I, I see me like when I make coffee, I put it so much into like my leadership life Yeah. because I need to know that there's be, there needs to be consistency in every aspect of me making coffee. Yeah. And I say, if I can, if I can lead my life the way I, I make coffee, I think things would be okay. Because if you look at like the chemic system, and pro- some people are probably so lost, watch a video <laughs> after, right? Like yeah. we'll make another video of how to make a chemix, right? <laughs> but it's it's like prior to putting the the uh, the the coffee um, in into the filter, you gotta like wet the filter. Yeah. And you you gotta you gotta make sure that it drains, and and you put it you put the, the warm water so that the chemix so that the glass can get warm and get adjusted yeah. to what's about to happen. And I feel like in leadership in life. As a Christian, as a believer, and even as a non-believer, if we're able to have make those steps in our daily lives, life would be so much easier. Like yeah. saying, okay, today, like I have a purpose. So like, it's easy to go to the Keurig, yeah. just pop it in, yeah, and press it, and in less than a minute, you have a yeah. cup of coffee. Yeah. But I don't find the same joy of just putting yeah. it on the Keurig, and I don't find the same taste yeah. as me having to grind the coffee, yeah. every, pull out the filter, every step, of the process. every step of the process, so that after that brew time of four minutes and 20 seconds, that I'm just waiting patiently as it drips down. Yeah. It's just like, I, I'm eagerly waiting, but I know that when I drink that cup of coffee, I'm drinking something that has 
first of all, it took in time, yeah. but that I know has is, is consistent. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like consistency is key. And especially as like a, a young person, like for, for anybody listening to this or watching this, you have to be consistent with what you do. Yeah. Like if you don't if you don't have consistency and 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 like if you don't have drive or you don't have goals, like your life is really it's yeah. gonna be like a Keurig life. And I have nothing against Keurig. Like you're gonna live on. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna drink something. You're yeah. you know, it's gonna be okay. Yeah. But compare a Keurig cup of coffee compared to like to, a Chemex that to, some yeah. coffee that was roasted, you yeah. know, a couple of days ago and you yeah. grinded it and, yeah. and and you went through the process, you enjoyed a lot more. So yeah. that's just that's just yeah. like I see my coffee, like the yeah. way I, I love coffee and I'm a coffee enthusiast to my personal life. So yeah. like everything I do kinda has to it has to go back to who I am as a person. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm really glad that you're into yeah. coffee, right? Yeah. Like that's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm a newbie though. I would I wouldn't I'm a I'm a starter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a beginner, so I may I may need some. some oh tips man, there we go. Some there more we ratios go. and stuff. So you talked about um, how you have it in the morning, every day in the morning, and how you 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 have this. It seems like you have this routine kind of thing. So talk to me about habits. Talk to me about um, routine. What is what's the importance of a routine? You just you just talked about consistency, but maybe get into more detail about like how that looks in your life mm -hmm. and the importance of it and how us as young people, young leaders, or maybe just a young student right now doing online school, doing or physical school, whatever, like the importance of habits, the importance of routine, and 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 you already talked about, but a little bit more like, how does it look like for you? Like on a daily basis? Yeah, yeah, daily basis. So for me, that, that's a great question. Um, for me, every day begins with, I go physical before I go digital. I, I yeah. mentioned it yesterday. Yeah. Um, what that means for me is that before I open any social media platform, on my cellular device or, or any of the devices, I, I read my word, like my Bible's with me and, yeah. and like a physical Bible. Like I know we, I get the reminder at 8 a.m. to, you know, my daily verse, yeah. but I like to have my physical Bible and write in my Bible. Um, even if it's just a verse or two, I just want it to sink in. I want to let, I want God to know, like, I, I'd be honest with you. I'm not like this great, powerful prayer guy that's gonna yeah. pray five hours a day. Yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah. that's it's really not me. Yeah. And I'm being transparent. Like, yeah, yeah. My, my prayers are like, all right, you know, the, I have my alone time with God in the morning, but I love to read scripture yeah. and to meditate on scripture first. So I go, I go physical before I go digital. Yeah. So I say, God, I put you first. Yeah. Um, and usually my wake up time is is and, and I people my, my family can attest to this. I wake up around six a.m. Yeah. Every single morning, like six a.m. is just my time. I wake up, I go physical, read my Bible a couple minutes you know, 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, and you know, that's my prayer time, uh, just my personal devotion with God. And I just begin my day from there. I, you know, get ready and go to the coffee shop. Either yeah. I'll make something at home or in the office, yeah. uh, or, but I usually go to the coffee shop. And, and the first, the first maybe 40, 50 minutes while I'm there, I'm there for about an hour. Mm -hmm. um, the first 10 minutes, I just speak to the baristas. Like literally, that's just, I want, like I said, well, I want to make other people better. Like yeah. if I'm not, if I'm not investing in other people, yeah. then I feel like I'm not, then I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not fulfilling my God-given purpose. Yeah. So go physical before digital, get ready, go to the coffee shop, talk to people, have community with people. Like I feel like it's so important to have community with people that are non-believers. Yeah. Like to yeah. do life with them as well. Because maybe a word of encouragement can change their day completely. Yeah. So for me, it's like making other people better. And then I kind of just start, then I go into my social platforms and see um I like what's going on, my, the news, and, and figuring out what's going on throughout the day. Um, before I even read emails, I just kind of want to get myself incited on what the day looks like culturally. Like, yeah. I want to be culturally relevant. Yeah. I want to be like this, you know, oh, wow, did you get the news, latest news? Like, I, yeah. I want to know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, so I, I do that, and, and then I go to work, and emails, and you know how that goes, meetings, and, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and of course, you know, extended lunches. Hopefully my boss isn't watching this, which he's my brother, right? But, you know, yeah. go to lunch yeah. and, and have these meetings and talk to students. and So I really practically, like practically my life is just making sure that I'm okay. Yeah. Because... I don't know for you, but if I'm not okay, yeah. then I'm pouring into other people my infection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. If, if I'm bleeding, then I'm just grabbing blood and, 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 just, and just sharing it to other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now they're carrying a burden that they that should never they should never be carrying. So for me, it's like, God, let me be okay. Yeah. I want to be okay. And yeah. when I'm not okay, be honest with you, Josh, uh, um, when, when I'm not okay, 
I kind of just cancel some of my meetings. Like, God, I, I need I need a little bit of alone time with yeah. you. Like, and I feel like it's okay sometimes. Like sometimes yeah. we're we're so involved in, with other people that we kind of just miss out on God. Mm-hmm. It's like okay, God. Like I, I just got to tell people like today it's gonna be one of the, one of those days where I just yeah. kind of need a. I just need me and God throughout the office. I, I, maybe I need to read a little bit more scripture. Maybe I need yeah. to just just some alone time. So that's what that's what it looks like for me, yeah. man. Yeah. That's what, cool. it, what about cool. for you? Like, wait, yeah. wait, wait. For me, um, it's this. It, it changes. I think I, I like to see life as like um, like I don't, I don't know what you you think, and you, you may disagree, but like. I, I can't under, I don't understand when people say it like balanced like live a balanced life live a balanced well, I, I don't I don't it doesn't click with me I, I see it as a rhythm I think I think seasons have a rhythm I think there's there's things you have more of there's things you have less of and there's there's priorities there's there's different things so for me it, it changes through seasons mm-hmm. um, but my my core my my main like the the non-negotiables is that time alone in the morning is um is that time of of uh, with God is that time with like just 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 that quiet alone like intimate just and, and like you said I, I, again like we, we we may just be the wrong people talking but I'm not I also I'm not gonna pray for five hours yeah. and, and like my my I just stay quiet like I'm quiet I'm meditating I read some scriptures same thing but. But um, but I'm mainly focused on listening. Like in the morning is, is when I'm just just God. What what are you saying? What I'll grab my my, my, my notebook. I will get a pen, and I just I just start like listening more more than just talking to God. More than me talking, I, I like to just listen. Um, but yeah, and then our, our schedule here at the at the church is very flexible, very thing. So I try to try to get to work. Um, I try to make my, my coffee in the morning too. Um, but so. So we have a, a, a like a coffee maker here where if if I miss it at, at the house I'll just get it here and this and that which is which is pretty great, um, but yeah yeah we, we joke around in the office that it's like our, our best friend the juror is like everybody's like <laughs> that's it yeah yeah, yeah. It's everybody's um, sidekick or something uh, side chick I mean but but that's kind of like like routines I take I like I take routine serious uh, I like to you know consistency I think is is in super super important like. Especially like with with like now as I'm as we're young like building these habits building these um, routines I think it's huge 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 um, I think uh, there's a quote like uh, uh, like a, a rapper I think I heard like if you stay ready you ain't got to get ready there you go so so like when when you're when you every day you're like working to get better working to get little by little little by little you you just it just builds up habits. Um, so yeah, I love morning routines. I love talking about morning routines. Um, I I could I could go all day about morning routines. I think I, I my, one of my favorite quotes quotes is, um, if you conquer the morning, you conquer the, you that's, conquer the day. Yeah, that's if so you good. conquer the day, you conquer the week. If that's you conquer so the week, good. you conquer the month, and so on and so forth. So, so good. yeah, we, and especially in leadership, like I don't know a a leader who's who's killing it and doesn't have like a like you know like a routine yeah. schedule. Like it's just. Just awesome, yeah, awesome, awesome. I think if, if people don't have like, like I love how you said it's it's rhythm, like it's a rhythm, like it's, it's, yeah, a rhythm. it's a rhythm, it's a rhythm, um, and it's it's like a pace. It's like you have yeah. to go at like, the pace of grace. Like yeah. I I love here. I've heard that from from a communicator. You said you just got to go at the pace of grace, and I, I yeah. feel like that's how it is. Like because if we're quite honest, pandemic changed yeah. the entire market. Yeah. yeah, like the coffee shop was closed. So what did I do? You know, when it yeah. while it was closed, yeah. then I went Chemex every morning. You know, yeah. and and what was normal in a previous season is now so different in a, in a new season yeah. but it's just you just gotta go with the rhythm like, yeah. like songs change rhythms change mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but but it just has to keep on going yeah. you, you can't stay stuck behind you gotta yeah. go with the flow because if yeah. not you're gonna get left behind yeah. and that's where I don't want as a leader like I don't want to be left behind. Like when I speak yeah. to other leaders, I speak less. Like I, I speak less, and I just hear them out. Yeah. Because like, I, yeah. I learn more by just listening. Yes. And I feel like with God, it's the same way. Sometimes we're we're so we talk so much, and yeah. God never speaks. Yeah. And we're like, God, I want you to speak to me. And yeah. God said, Man, if we could just be quiet if for you could one just second, shut up for a yeah. Bit. <laughs> like you just just don't say nothing. Yeah. I, I have yeah. something to tell you, but you're, you're just so we get so caught up yeah. with talking. Yeah. But yeah. man, I I just love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, and um, so, so talk to me about change. Okay. Um, right now, you touched a little bit about uh, on it about how you know the rhythms change and and like with COVID change, like that. That's why I'm a huge believer in rhythm. Like having a healthy life is having a life of rhythm. Because like this past week, these past couple weeks with breakout, it's like I've probably had 
like my hours of sleeping have like reduced drastically. Like I'm I'm running on caffeine right now. But um, so it's that cha- that rhythm changed. So it was like, okay, we got to step up to the plate. This is this is important week. Like short sleeps, early mornings, late nights. Like so, it's it, it's changed. You know, talk to me about like adapting and and being um, being relevant. Uh, and it's it, it's it's a touchy word, right? Um, you know what I mean. But but talk to me about that. Like, how has your ministry changed right now in COVID? Um, COVID hit. It changed a lot of aspects of our world, right? Um, how has that changed? What is what has that done to your ministry at home, uh, your church, and what have you guys done to pivot and to adapt? While you know, I, the way I saw all this is like you see in the movies where there's a train going and there's somebody like like trying to get. It's like just running and trying to jump on the train. You know, that's how it, it just it just got us like that. But yeah, talk to me about that change, man. Well. In ministry, as, as a communicator, as a public speaker, now you're competing against guys that preach a hundred yeah. times better than you, yeah. a million times better, that have way better content than you. Because <laughs> everybody, it's, a, it's everybody to like all at once. Like, all at once. Yeah. And it's like you go on Facebook or YouTube at 9 a.m. on a Sunday and um, yeah, there's a better communicator than you, and there's a possibility that your congregation is watching somebody else's ministry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So now it's like, uh, there's a change there that now you're not even sure of your, your community is watching you, yeah. you know. Um, secondly, now you have to be so aware. If we've, I've, I've always been a firm believer that you have to know what you're communicating and what you're saying and being precautious on how you say things not yeah. to offend somebody. And, yeah. Yeah, but now you have hundreds and even say thousands of people watching you on a weekly basis. Yeah. So now you're sermonizing. It's like very different. Yeah. You're using different wording. Yeah. Um, you're, you're trying to not offend this, uh, you know, this demographic or this, you know, yeah, and you're yeah, just yeah. like, oh my gosh. And you're prepping all week and you're just like, did I do well or not? Mm-hmm. And it's like, uh, because now the audience is so much larger. Yeah. Um, now you're not even sure if you're, you're not sure if people are actually having like family altars or they're just on their bed, you know, just yeah, like yeah, chilling, yeah. watching yeah. service. You're just like, yeah. so that's a big change. Um, I think change is as a communicator, um, going from preaching to hundreds of people on a weekly basis to preaching to just a camera. Yeah, huge, huge change, Like by the way. You know, huge change. Even when you're preaching bad, you know, you got your mom or your cousin right there like, yeah, you're doing great, son. And, <laughs> you know, that gives you a little bit of joy to like keep yeah. on going. But now it's just like the dude that's on the ki- behind the camera, yeah. which today is your fiance, which we shout out to her. <laughs> <Shout> <laughs> but it's just like, they're just there looking at you like, all right, you know, like they're not telling you, hey, man, nobody's there. Yeah. You know, you're just like, you don't even know if you're doing well or not. <laughs> you're just like, uh, okay. <laughs> so that's like a big change. Yes. Um, as a church, I feel a big change has been like, are people, like, are they actually receiving? Yeah. Like, I think that's been one of my biggest questions with our staff. Like, are people's life actually being transformed on, on yeah. a live stream? Um, are people actually tuning into the live stream? Yeah. Um, Cause the numbers have increased, but does that mean that our members, like is, our, is, it, is it just like yeah. traffic or is it like actually members? Yeah. Um, so it's a lot of change, man. It's been change. a lot, a lot of yeah. change. In my personal life, the rhythm changed. Yeah. Um, now I find myself, you know, some months back, you know, I was reading some different kinds of books of like, you know, yeah. leadership of how to like, you know, hands-on leadership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it's like, I just finished a book that it, 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 the title was Leading on Empty. Yeah. And it was like, okay, Leading on Empty. Why? Because now, like, all these Zoom meetings, it's like, yeah. back, at least as in leadership, you have, like, weekly meetings, and you get to feel the, your leaders. Like, you get to feel their heart. You get to yeah. feel how their their health, their spiritual health. But now you're just, like, on Zoom, they got, like, a Hawaiian background, and they're yeah. like, everything's fine. But do I really <laughs> yeah. know you're fine? Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, so that's sure. been such a change, Josh. Um and, and just overall, just like no traveling. Um, this is one of my first speaking engagements in, in the last months that I'm yeah. able to be here yeah. uh, with an actual audience. So that's that's a change as well. Like yeah. yesterday was the first time in months that I spoke to to an actual audience. And it was like, oh, goodness, this yeah. is what it feels like to get an amen. Yeah. You yeah. know, like yeah. this yeah. is what it's like. So yeah. it's just been great. It's been so, so great. What about for you? What does change look like? So change for me um, in this season has been, um, it's, it's been big. Like, I mean going from like everything in person like just a mentality a mentality shift it was more than anything it was a mentality shift 
um, because at the end of the, at the end of the day, our 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 calling, our work is still the same. We reach people. We we uh, I like to say we why why do I do what I do? Because I want to reach the lost, teach the found, and inspire change. Mm-hmm. So at the bottom line, it's it's still our mission. That's still our calling. But the way we're doing it now has has just changed so much. Um, and to be honest, it caught me off guard. Like um I know like. I'm the young guy, I'm the, the guy on Instagram, uh, I'm on Facebook, I'm on YouTube, I'm on all the platforms, but like, you you wouldn't have like, have guessed how like, how much of a struggle it was for me to shift ministry wise of thinking, okay, it's not anymore about the, the crowds or the events, it's now online. Like it's now about the videos, it's about the content, it's about like, and, and it's still ministry. Like it, it took me, it took me a little bit to, to do that shift of, of, of realizing, okay, a podcast could, could work, could work, it could be effective, you know, for, for the, for, for what we do, for reaching people, for, for um, inspiring change and stuff like that. So for me, the biggest change in this thing was, was the mind shift yeah. of saying, okay, um, this is okay. It's, it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. Um, Kids, students are gonna be are gonna be healthy. Um, we're gonna um, um, uh, uh, preach the gospel. We're gonna do all these things. The, our, so our methods had to change. And I, I was always saying our methods can always are always gonna change. Our message never will. This and that. And then when our method had to change, I was like, okay, I, I, it's, it's easier to say. Yeah. yeah, it's easier to say it than to do it. Oh um, So um, so yeah, it's it's changed so much. I mean, now we're our our ministry has now is on podcasts. It's on YouTube. It's on Instagram. It's on working on like a. Low key TikTok, but maybe, maybe not. <laughs> it's a controversial topic, but um, but we're so now we're we're with where the people are. Yeah. So if if the people are at the park, we're at the park. If the people are on social media, we're on social media. If the people are on uh at wherever it is that they, they are, that's where we need to be. Yeah. That's where I, I love this quote that whatever we avoid, the enemy will invade. Yep. Whatever we're avoiding, so the enemy's gonna invade so it. So, so we, need, we need to be, wherever it is, we need to be there. If there's a party, we're there. If there's wherever, like every, I tell our, our staff, every inch of this city, we need to be there. Yeah. We need to be there, we need to be the hope, we need to be the light. We, so whatever avenue that is, whether it's a podcast, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Instagram, whatever it is, we need to be there. Um, so for me, it was a mind shift, m- mindset shift that that needed to happen, and um, and um, and yeah, it's a process. And if anybody here listening is is going through that, it's like like you know, it's it's easier said than done, yeah. but it's possible. Yeah, it's possible you know, for any minister out there or any any leader at all. Um, so talk to us about um, talk to us about uh, in in the past year or so. Give us. Give us a high point in your life. Give us and give us a low point in your life. A high, high, and and, and, and low, low. As, as transparent as you want to, as you want to be. Um, but yeah, tell us, tell us a little bit about about these these past few months and how how that's been for you. Okay, so I know it's a bit of a deep. Yeah, question, that's a, a bit, deep bit man. A, it it caught me. <laughs> I gotta drink some. I gotta drink something for this one. Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah, yeah. A uh, high and a low. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, let's celebrate the victories and then we'll speak on what we can evaluate. Yeah. To, <laughs> um, yeah. I think one of the highs for me this this last year has been definitely, I think how my love for my family has grown. I, mm. I'm the youngest out of uh, four, uh, I have uh, three other siblings, so it's four of us total. Yeah. And I have, um, I believe it's 11 or 12 Nephews, or in, in, yeah. you know, the, yeah. so then they're all under the age of five, so that's yeah. like a wild. So yeah. Mondays, they're always at you know mom and dad's house, yeah. Uh, and it's 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 a kindergarten, you know, it's a whole kindergarten. <laughs> I know exactly. And, and so I know, it's it's wild. I know that to a T. Yeah, it's to wild. T. Like you go to grandma's house, there's kids in drawers, there's kids in closets, there's kids <laughs> uh, in the seat, like hanging from the, like kids everywhere. It's wild. It yeah. is so wild, and um, as much as it's it's so odd that. Like as a communicator, like when we work in church, um, we have to deal with people every day. Like people is what we do. You know, it's like, yeah. like we, we're always with people. But honestly, I'm such an introvert. Like as weird as it sounds, like I'm, I'm such an introvert. Like I, I love to be alone. Yeah. Like I want to be alone. And that's one of my that was has that has been one of my biggest struggles. Like 
just me being alone. Like that's what I do. Like I get home and I'll go to my room and that, that's it. You know, like yeah. I, I, I just feel like, okay, this is, this is my safe space. That's why when I go to the coffee shop, I try, I forcefully have to make myself like people and, and yeah. be with people like, okay. And it's hard for me because if it were for me, I'll just have my AirPods yeah. you can go to my little seat and, and just, that's it. Yeah. But in the last year, my highest point is how much appreciation I've gained for my family. Like mm. now, and I get home, all the kids are screaming everywhere. I love that. Yeah. Like, I can't see myself without that and they appreciate yeah. it. I, I love my parents and my siblings so much, but now it's even such a, so my high point for my life yeah. is, wow. Yeah. Like my family is, is, at the end of the day, Josh, all we have is, is, is family. It's like family. That, like we go back home, like friends will leave us. You know, yeah. it, it, all that will happen, but yeah. the people that will be there for you are sometimes the people that we less take care of. Yeah. But yeah. my high point was really, really cherishing my family. Yeah. Now my low point also has to involve my family. Um, my lowest point in my life was just a couple months ago when I thought I was gonna lose both of my parents. Mm. Um, both of my parents uh, ended up very ill, yeah. very, very ill. Um, and I saw life just flash yeah. in a, in an instant where both of my parents were sick. There was, and in, in, I'm the only one that lives at home still with parents. Mm -hmm. And I remember, and this was recent, in the last two months, that there was one night where I took mom to the hospital and I had to leave her due to COVID. Yeah. So I couldn't be there. Yeah. And I was home and I saw my dad, like, uh, we're about to lose dad. Wow. Wow. And... I remember there was there was one specific night where it was all of my siblings, and it, it was a night my, my sister's a singer, and she had just released a song th that day. But it was one of the toughest days of our lives. Where my 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 father like I had never seen my dad cry. Like it's very rare for you know. Yeah. And it was all of my siblings in their bedroom. And we're like, we, we don't know if they're, we don't know if they'll make it past this night. Both of my parents, it's not just one of my parents, wow, both of my time. parents at the same time, ill, just ill. And it was the lowest point of my life. And it was this year. Yeah. And, and in the midst of, of seeing like that low of like, man, my, my parents are, <laughs> yeah. Like, everything just started flashing in my life. Like, okay, like what have you done? Yeah. And I think the reason I have had such a high of appreciating my parents is because I had such a low. Yeah. And I feel that in life, you have to hit rock bottom in order yeah. to just elevate yourself yeah. once again. Yeah. So seeing them in that scenario was so low. It was, it was so tough, but God is so good. Yeah. And they recovered. It was a miracle from God. They recovered. Um, and, and now my parents, they've been RVing for the last three weeks. Like they've been, yeah. they cross country from Las Vegas to yeah. Florida yeah. on their RV and God is just so good. Yeah. Um, and I believe that that was the, the, no, I don't believe, I know that was the lowest season of the last, you know, the, this year. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that was just so tough, but God is good. Um, and I think from the low points, you get to really cherish the high points. Yeah. And just like last night, we spoke on that ladder effect. Yeah. That every time you take a new step, like uh, every step is a, is a new perspective. So I had to take a step of wow, like I could, I could, I, I was so close to losing my parents, but we elevated that, and now I can see with a new perspective, the yeah. God-given vision for yeah. my life towards my family. Yeah. So that that's really that was really my highs yeah. and lows of this year, yeah. man. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for the transparency, and you know I like totally under like. I don't want to say I understand to a T. I've not been through that, but but I see. Um, I agree with you on how. Um, I love what you said about our low point. Our low points help us cherish and and treasure our high points. Yeah. Like, and that's that's one of the things I love about God is He can bring purpose to our pain. Correct. You know, He He just He's it's just how how He is. You know, He's not. We're not it's just because we're with him. We're not going to avoid pain, and life is not going to be perfect and roses and pink and rainbow. And uh, in Spanish, it's color de rosa. Yes, he is. Um, <laughs> but but his you know the pain that we go through with Jesus doesn't have to be in pain in vain. He can he can bring purpose to it, and and there's something something special about that. Yeah. You know. So to end um, to end to end off, talk to us about creativity. Let's let's. It's, I know it's it's a big subject, but um, and, but 
and you got to catch a flight and pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. But um, but uh, but talk, let's talk about creativity. Um, what is what is uh, your creative process? Uh, let's say if you're um, writing a sermon, if you're you know uh, directing some kind of video or something like that. What's what's that um, creative zone okay. for you? Okay, so I'll, I'll speak from what I mostly do is which communicating. Yeah. Um, when I'm building my sermon, when I'm going to sermonize, my first initial thought is the audience. Mm-hmm. Who am I speaking to? Yeah. Who, who's this yeah. for? Who is this for? Yeah. And it's always, it's for the lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. First, like other, it's for Jesus. Like we, we're going to glorify him. But the people in the room or the people online watching, it's like it's for people that don't know who he is. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I s- try to simplify as much as I can the scripture. I try to bring it down to their level of understanding. Yeah. Sometimes, um, and th- there are speakers for all kinds of people, but for me personally, I know who God has set in my path to reach. Yeah. So I know that I have to be, I have to speak to them in a manner of telling them personal stories, connecting with them. Yeah. If I can connect with them in the first four or five minutes of my sermon, yeah. I think they'll listen for the next five. Yeah. And it's just like, it's, I, I always look at the end result. Like, okay, yeah. at the end of this, what is the goal? Like, what, what is the purpose of this? Mm-hmm. And for me, it's like, I want people to make that decision to follow yeah. Jesus. Yeah. So I'm simple. I'm, I'm very practical. Yeah. Um, I tend to really always engage my personal life so that we can have something in common. Yes. Like, I can't just be like this, always like scripture, like, oh, you know, this, this, and that. Yeah, yeah. And it's more like, no, like, I, I go yeah. through the same struggles like yeah, you yeah. and I. Like, yeah. the, the transparency, yeah. it has to be the same off the platform than on the platform. Yeah, so yeah. if I, you know, we're speaking about, you know, our cars break down. It's like something that we have in common. Like, we've yeah. all been through that situation. Yeah. So it's yeah. just like being re- very relevant. My creative process is being simple but effective. Yeah, less is more. Love Simple that. but effective. Like the less I can say, the more effective I can be. Because sometimes yeah. we we over talk yeah. and they won't understand nothing. We're like, man, I did great, and the people are like, what did he even say? And it's yeah. more like yeah. I can say less. Yeah, maybe with an example, it's like, oh wow, they got it. Yeah. And I feel like the the process, my creativity process, is making sure, at least in my church community, we range from middle school, high school, young adults to, to middle age to, to, you know, to elders in the church. So I have 45 minutes to have to reach every single one of those areas. Um, and that's, that is a tough, that is a tough, um, that's a tough crowd when you have so many age uh, groups. So it's just reaching them in every area, reaching, being able. So I'm creative in, in my introduction, my thesis, uh, the, the main body. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm a three point preacher. Yeah. Like I, I want to yeah. be, a, I want to know that they can leave knowing yeah. uh, that there is a beginning, a middle and an end. And, yeah. and if they forget all of it, I hope that they leave at least yeah. that I made them laugh once. Yeah. You know, like, okay, yeah, like yeah. If, they, if they miss everything, like, okay, they got to laugh. Yeah. They laughed about me like yesterday about when I thought yeah. the rapture came at, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. just like, okay, if that, if that can just reminisce to their lives being changed, praise God. So yeah. my creative process is just being simple but effective. Like that's simple. the simplest way I can put it. And yeah. when it comes to like production wise, I feel that less is more. You know, um, I, 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 I've heard I, I heard when they say that you know uh, you win some and you lose some as long as the outcome is income. And and yeah. I don't speak it financially, but as like the income can be so a, bro- a range of things. But for me, yeah. the income is like if lives are changed, if people make the decision to go to a next step, to get baptized, like that's just like okay. Sometimes you win some. Like sometimes you have great. Victory. He's like, I don't know, but maybe it's happened to you, but it happens to me a whole lot, right? I write a sermon, and I'm like, this is gonna be incredible. Yeah. I preach it and I completely bunk it. Like, but then you get that text, like, man, that sermon changed my life, and I'm like, oh god, great. Sorry about that. No, it's good. You, 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 that, yeah, that's yeah. telling me to be quiet already. No, 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 you get it. <laughs> no, get but what, what, what it is for me is, is less is more. Less is more. What about yeah. for you, Josh? Like, yeah. what, what is your creative process? We close. Yeah. Um, my creative process. Um, do you want to call Keegan? He, yeah. Or just text him, tell him we're still at the park. Sorry. There you um, go. <clears throat> uh, my, my creative process is, um, is we start off the same way. My, my initial thing is, and, and also the, the main thing I do is, is um, ser- sermon writing. Um, but um, but I, I start off the same way. Who is this for? Who is who's God? Who's God putting my heart in? Is this is this a kid who who is struggling with um, self worth? Is this a kid struggling with 
with um, addictions? Is this a kid struggling with something? Like I, I try to find who who I'm talking to first, um, and then and then also scripture. Um, I in my alone time, I think that's that's my creative spot uh, with God because um, He's the greatest creative, creative that ever that ever will be. Yeah. So creativity comes from Him. Yeah. Um, so. But in a practical way, I I try same we same very similar styles. I always try to be a personal personal stories. I joke around that I that I never make myself the hero of the story. Like it's always I did this wrong or something happened or this and that. Like um, in in my sermons, but but I think God uses that. I yeah. think I think people um, can can come to a point where they can respect your victories, yeah. but they can. But when they relate to you, it's through your weakness. Yeah. When they relate to you and when you connect to them, it's through the brokenness. Yeah. I think I think when we're when we're honest and transparent with people, I think that's when, when we can connect with them the best. Yeah. Um, and obviously once we've come to a moment of healing, I don't believe in bleeding on the platform, like kinda like what you said is uh, the way I think about it is bleeding on the platform is is you know just being transparent in a non-wise way, yeah. but like when we've come to healing, when we when we can give something we've already received, I think that's that's the way that's the way it is. But but yeah, I like to I like my creative thing. I like to have my, my brain my my area clear. Um, I have a, a room at, at at my house where it's all white. It's an all white room, white desk. Like it's just simple. It's plain. Like it could be too plain for some people. But um, it's it's just a place where where I I feel comfortable. I feel clear. I feel there's no clutter. There's no um, there's just, it's just me and and thoughts, a pen and a paper. It's just um, that's that's kind of what 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 my zone is kind of. Um, so so yeah, it's 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 and I think it's different for everybody. It's different. Yeah. Some people like different things some people like to do different things but but I what I like to tell people is do what works yeah Study. do what works have some self awareness i think self awareness is huge 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 like um like knowing studying yourself as a leader as a, as a student as a person as a father as a parent just how do, uh, first of all how do you learn how do you how do you, how do you take um change how do you manage um anxiety how do you manage like stress like or, or what are the best times in the day where, where you're most creative? Like yeah. study yourself. Sometimes it, for me, it's early morning or it's re really late at night. Really, really late. Like for me, are, it's both opposites. Like during the day is more for like, for me, it's like tasks, meetings, um, um, different things that are just kind of like come and go, like boom, 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 boom. But when I need it, when I need to sit down and write a sermon or or design something, it's or edit something, it's either super early or super, super late. Um, I think those are those are my times and it's weird, like yeah. <laughs> you know But so, it works. But it works. And and I hope it works. Yeah. It's, it's my <laughs> hope. Um, but awesome. So so Eric, any last things you wanna you wanna say to to um, to our audience, um, any last words, anything, any word of encouragement. By the way, one of one of uh, uh, I could tell you're a great leader. Um, one of the greatest leaders I know, my mom, always said, always said, she always told me, Josh, you need to be interested, not so much interesting. Ask questions, learn about people, hear about them. So I'm here interviewing you, and you're asking me the questions. So that it's huge, huge, huge. Um, um, that tells that tells me you're a great leader, great listener. Um, great speakers are great listeners. Um, great leaders are great, you know, um, students of of anything around them. So so thank you so much. Any last words? Any words of encouragement? Any anything you want to leave us with? Well, I appreciate your words. That the man, that's great. Um, last words would be this. If you're too big to serve, then you're too small to lead. Wow. Love that. Like, bottom line. Bottom line for me, it's anything. It don't matter where, what it is in life. Like, it's not just, it's not just in church. It's not, it's in your everyday life. Yeah. Like, if you think you're better than people, you will never be able to lead people. Yeah. And I even take it a step further and say, <laughs> If you're too big for yourself, yeah. then you can't even lead yourself. Wow. Yeah. And what I mean by that is you're leading your own life mm -hmm. and you're not allowing God to lead you. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's where it's at. Like 
yeah. just serve people like yeah. anything you want, yeah. man. Like yeah. if it's paying for somebody's coffee, picking up the trash, you know, do anything. Like anything. no, nothing is too small. I think yeah. if we think we're too big for something, for something small, we can, then God will never elevate you. Yeah. So just, yeah, just serve. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. That's, that's incredible. Incredible. Well, Eric, where can we find you? What's your IG handle? Are you on Facebook? Are you on, uh, what are your platforms? Oh, oh man. Okay. <sighs> I hope they write this down on, on the, on the <laughs> down here somewhere, right, guys? We'll uh, put it. We'll put it. Uh, Instagram, yeah, Eric Jimenez, two C's and two Z's, and that's on Twitter and on Facebook, Eric Jimenez. Yeah. Awesome. Although that on Facebook, I'll be honest with you, I got all my Dias and deals on there. You know, yeah. you know how Facebook yeah, yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. even use it, but it's just like you just have it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, that, no, that's that's just where you'll find me, and all you're gonna find is coffee, um, uh, you know, some pictures of my Bible and a golf, a whole lot of golf. <laughs> awesome. But no, it's great, man. All right, bro. Well, thank you. For for joining us today. Thank you. Breakout was incredible. Thank you for coming that was through incredible. and bringing the house down. Uh, thank you so much. And we can't wait to, to talk again. Yeah, that's it, man. Appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Awesome. Awesome. And cut. Okay. That was awesome. I love that phone call. Like, that was great. That was, that was my favorite part. <laughs>